Hi, and welcome to Extra Good. This week is a little bit different because it's been so hot that we've decided that we don't want to work on the truck. So what we are going to talk about is uh, the cost of a restoration. And with one of our finished cars that we have, we can actually talk about that. Seeing as I'm just about done spending money on it, I can tell you how much we've spent. The truck is a never ending project, so we'll have that tally when it's finished. What do you think about that? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Over the years, I found a lot of people underestimate the cost of restoring a classic car. So we wanted to share with you what we've spent start to finish on bringing Ethan's 57 Ford back to life. And by back to life, I mean truly from the dead. It was, it needed everything. It just needed everything. And I needed it to work because I had to go to the Lone Star Roundup. I couldn't just go as a spectator. I had to drive my car. And that's really what got us into this mess in the first place. Yeah, so start to finish, we uh, spent a year, maybe 15 months on getting this active. So I'm gonna pull out my phone and give you guys a cost tabulation of exactly what we spent, where it went, and why we decided to use the parts we used sometimes. So first thing, brakes and wheels. This seems like it's pretty straightforward. Well, oh, you know, we, had to go through and change everything about the brakes. So it was originally all drums, now it's all wheel disc. Um, it was originally a single master cylinder. We went to a dual power boosted master cylinder. So now it's got modern brakes, full power brakes, all wheel disc. You know, so that was, to me, brakes are the most important thing on a car because if it doesn't stop, it's a death trap. As we found out in the last episode. Mm, yeah, we've had this discussion, haven't we? So in total, we spent 2,900 on brakes and wheels. Uh, the spindles at 600, rear brakes at five. That was a full uh, disc brake conversion. Kit, yeah, so it was five for the back. Uh, the fronts, we actually went with the Fat Man Fab lowering spindles, and then that allowed us to do uh, the disc brakes and the calipers. So if you, you mentioned lowering spindles we used on this, and obviously that encompasses stance. This is where you have to think about the stance of the car, and there's gonna be a difference in price between a stock stance and a modified stance. What are we doing here? Uh, this one's very, very much modified. Um, you know, I didn't have to change the spindles, but I wanted to, because I wanted to really get the front of this car as low as I can get it while being comfortable to ride in. If I were to just do a spring drop by cutting coils or lowering springs, um, it would have gotten the car very low, but it also would have been, the suspension travel wouldn't have been adequate and it'd be hitting its bump stops all the time. Really so, compromises ride quality. So the lowering spindles, what that does for me is it actually moves the wheel higher up into the car, but it's not going to change any of the geometry of the control arm. So I get that lowered stance, but I still maintain full travel of the suspension. So that was my real big motivation for doing that. And then I even cut a coil off the springs on top too. So it's low, it's low. The next thing is suspension and steering. Uh, on that, we spent $1,740. Uh, shocks, springs, bushings, sway bars, steering wheel, steering column, and steering box. Steering box, babe, $600. It's the biggest item on the suspension and steering. Why do we, did we need a new one? Uh, the car was originally manual steering, um, which is gonna be very difficult to steer at low speeds and then in parking lots, it's really hard to turn the steering wheel. I know, Studebaker has manual still. And I'm all about comfort and drivability. So, you know, I've got the power brakes, now I've got power steering. So this car has actually got a lot of modern options in it, even though it's, you know, 60 years old almost. So your goal on this car was really to have a nice driving, very dependable 
car. It's not crazy wazoo performance. It's not obviously stock. Um, yeah, reliability and drivability were my two priorities. Uh, horsepower and in, in doing smoky burnouts is not what I'm about, though it is fun. Um, I wanted something that I could reliably drive 3,500 miles in a single sitting, and that's what I built. Um, this car does not have a lot of horsepower. It's a stock motor. It's a stock 5.0 roller cam Ford small block. But since it is stock, it drives like a stock Lincoln. I mean, it just drives real smooth and it's reliable and gets good gas mileage. And it, it, it lets me enjoy it by driving it, not just staring at it and working on it. So back one more thing on the suspension and steering mm -hmm. is front and rear sway bars. We spent $300 on those. Uh, this car doesn't originally have sway bars, I don't believe. It had a front sway bar, which was very, very small, very inadequate, and no rear sway bar whatsoever. So we've actually upgraded, almost doubled the size of the front sway bar. So it's a much stiffer front suspension and then added a rear sw uh, sway bar to the back. Um, and like we talked about in the last episode of the benefit of a sway bar, it keeps the car more level when you're going around turns, less body roll. And that means more control and more safety. So moving on to the engine and exhaust, our total for this area was $2,355, uh, starting with a big fat zero for the engine. Where do we get that from, babe? My neighbor Craig, a like-minded car enthusiast with way too many parts and projects in his head. So he had a bunch of spare stuff that he was able to give us and I pretty much just cracked the motor open, took a look at it, replaced gaskets and put it into the car and it's been running ever since, it works great. You just had to replace gaskets and stuff, so why did we spend $2,300 on the engine and exhaust? Well, again, the engine itself was free, but all the crap that you bolt onto the engine still costs money. So we had to get power steering, accessories, alternator. $450 for those brackets. For brackets to mount the accessories. Um, 200 on the scoop. On the scoop, valve cover, oil pan. You know, the gasket kit itself was about 80 bucks. So, you know, we still spent $2,300 on a free engine. So if you don't have a free engine, you're gonna add a couple more thousand dollars to that thousand, couple thousand we already spent. Um, so going down our list, we've got plumbing and stainless brake lines, $350. Uh, a lot of people might not really consider plumbing, but you love your car plumbing and like to use the wazoo parts. I went a little overboard when it came to the brake lines. They are fighter jet quality. So, you know, if it's what the military uses to build their weapons, it's gonna work great for me. It's extra good. It's extra good. It's all stainless, no rust. Uh, motor mounts, 30. Trans linkage, radiator and overflow, 300. Battery, 125. Shifter, 220. Uh, mufflers and exhaust. Yeah. Uh, we did the uh, hooker header mufflers, the aero chamber mufflers. Um, I was never seen or heard them. I tried them on the car, really liked them. And they're actually the same mufflers that we're using on the truck as well. So they're a really neat sound. I like them. Drivetrain. Uh, so the, the rest of the drivetrain, $1,650. This includes the highest item of everything out of our list and that's the differential rebuild for $1,300. Why is that part so expensive? Two wheel burnouts. I completely rebuilt the differential. The only thing that's still original from 1957 in that axle are the actual axle shafts, the housing and the carrier. All the guts, all the internals, the seals, the bearings, everything. Uh, ring and pinion gears have been replaced. Um, we went, I think it was a 320 gear set. We went to a 370 gear set with a um, Auburn limited slip as well. So I really, really beefed up the, the axle, really because I wanted to do two wheel burnouts. I <laughs> just, I wanted that. It's just not the same if you've only got one wheel. Yeah. Um, so if somebody isn't doing, you know, a lot of engine modification, do they need to rebuild a diff? if they're restoring a car? No, no. 
You don't. If you just want to drive it and cruise around, you don't need to spend 1300 bucks. So if you've got it. your 1964 Ford Falcon with a straight six, uh, make sure it's not leaking back there, but you don't need to spend $1,300. I would though address the wear items, like the wheel bearings and any seals and stuff. That's sure. that's important. But wheel bearings is one of those items that goes out on a lot of people when they take their first road trip. Yeah, gotta grease them. Yep. Cool. Uh, Drivetrain. Uh, also, we spent three fifty on a custom new drive shaft, and that has to be done when generally when you change the engine because the links or the transmission, the links of the drive shaft change. Um, anything else on that? Yeah, well, what happened is I was originally going to have the original drive shaft just modified, have it shortened, which is an option that's out there. You can just have it cut by a shop, they'll rebalance it, and you can put it back in. Um, but when I went to the rebuilder, they made note that it was a very thin, you know, a small diameter drive shaft. And the money to have a brand new one made was slightly more than having my existing one uh, modified. So I actually went with a fully new drive shaft, a three inch diameter tube, all new U joints, new slip yoke, um, everything's new. So from harmonic balancer to differential and everything in between, it's all new stuff. I did a lot of work on the interior. Uh, $730 was spent on that, and most of that was for the $700 stereo. Yeah, so we've got $30 in actual interior and $700 in entertainment. Um, look, you're about to drive a car cross country. You best have a radio. That's, that was my thinking. I actually made sure the radio was working before I even put sway bars on the thing. Like that was my priority was at least if I'm broken down on the side of the road, at least I have some tunes. Now, if you're on a budget, you don't have to spend that $700. And even though that seems like a pretty hefty price, that actually like the stereo box was built. The front speaker enclosures we built. So there was even some DIY in the stereo, but those components are gonna cost you money however you slice it. Studebaker, on the other hand, I have zero radio. I like to listen to her engine. Sometimes I try to use a little Wi-Fi Bluetooth speaker on the bench, which doesn't really work that well because she's so noisy, but you've got options in that department. Uh, the interior, again, so many options. We spent $30 on materials. I have a lot of sewing background, but I think that People, even without sewing background, I didn't use a lot of sewing on his 57. Uh, it was really just the hog ring pliers and a staple gun. Uh, we did the door panels. We did the back package tray. We covered the stereo box components up in the foot, front foot wheel wells. And then we did a, a classy Mexican blanket on the benches. But even with that, we kind of, what does the chef say? Bonjour. <laughs> We, bon we, appetit. We uh, elevated. We elevated. Oh, that's right. We put an egg on it. Yeah, we put an egg on the upholstery, Mexican blanket upholstery, uh, because rather than just like tucking the Mexican blanket in, I actually used hog ring pliers. It's like a $15 tool, and we were able to really fit the Mexican blanket to that bottom seat so it's not sliding all around. Uh, and it just gives it a, a much more finished look, even though it's temporary for now. The exterior, also uh, abysmally small amount spent here, $200. That consists of really, uh, from the firewall forward, I had all the sheet metal taken off, had it sandblasted, and then just covered in a coat of paint. It's not even the finished paint job, it's just something to seal the metal and keep it from deteriorating. So everything you see on the car from the windshield forward is really kind of at a state where it's ready for body work, but I mean, it's just my cruiser car I don't want to do 30 grand on paint and then have someone scratch it in a parking lot. So I'd rather just have it look all beat and run really good than look really good and not run at all. Yeah, so obviously there are tons of options here. If you have a stock car and you can give it a good wax and buff, it can do a lot. You want to, of course, get a project car that has good quality metal so it's safe and sound. Uh, that can be one of the most expensive parts of a project if it is in poor quality. Um, but your 57 is not, so back off, you had that what, $500 paint job when you first got it in 2004? Yeah, I got a $500 Compton paint job when I first got the car and it lasted about six months. And <laughs> now it's it's looked like this for the last decade plus. 
Um, but I, like I said, I don't, don't really care about the, the aesthetics of the car. It's not a show car. Yeah, the color or the paint or scratches or dents have no effect on how the car functions. You know, it's just purely for visual pleasure. So I don't care about the paint. One day, maybe when I'm retired, but for right now, I'm just gonna <laughs> drive the piss out of it. item here before we get to the total for our DIY car restoration. Uh, that was what we term expendables. Uh, $550 for that. That includes uh, cleaning stuff, sanding stuff, wire wheels, nuts and bolts, liquids, yeah. all of that. It seems like more than you might think you would spend on it if you've never done this before, but it adds up very, very quickly. Yes, it does. So all in, drum roll please. Well, before, before we mention this, see, the reason we're even talking about this is Kristen in passing simply asked me, hey, how much do you think we spent on the 57? And off the top of my head, I said, 10 grand. And she didn't believe me. In my head, I had maybe five grand. So that prompted us to make the list that we just went over. That's where that list came from, is from her asking me how much I thought it cost. And like I said, I just guessed. I was just going off of an estimate. We added up that list and it came out to $10,125. So I was within a, like, a percent. <laughs> Which just blows me away. Like, if you asked me to ballpark something that I did five years ago, I would be, I, I don't remember this kind of stuff, but this guy's fine, Mr. Klein's brain is amazing. I'm a smart guy. SMRT smart. What's up? So that's what we spent on our classic car. Hopefully it helps you a little bit ballpark the figures for your own build. Now that we've got the basic cost of car restoration broken down for you, I want to just go over a few of the final things that we were doing to uh, I think we're calling this phase three of the 57 build. Uh, so we need to do a few things. We haven't been using the car much and I would really love to drive it since we've spent so much money on it. Yeah, I, uh, I will continue to spend money on this car. I mean, I guess we've talked about the cost, but really the answer is you're always going to be spending money just constantly. Um, you know, we spent a fair amount of money to actually build the car, but now I'm into the fun part of spending more money to maintain the car. And people say a project car is never done. And they're right, because the work you did 10 years ago is now starting to go bad. <laughs> so you have to redo stuff you've already done. Um, but really with the maintenance for this car, um, all we had was a thermostat leak. Uh, so I had to replace the gasket. And while I was there, I went ahead and did the thermostat as well. And then a uh, really a drivability, kind of working the gremlins out of the car was putting a fuel pressure regulator in. I had a stock fuel pump, I went to an upgraded fuel pump, and when I did that, I started seeing like 15 to 20 PSI at the fuel rail. That's no good for carburetors. So I put in a pressure regulator, and now we've got that down to about six and a half on the rail. Uh, there's no fuel leaks, there's no coolant leaks, which is important if you're driving a car with no hood, because if there's a leak, you're gonna know about it. Um, but yeah, it's just some basic maintenance stuff that we did this weekend. I, and, you know, we spent about 150 bucks and four hours in the shop. And I got to do an oil change. She did the oil change. We got new coolant in the car. So, you know, just doing some maintenance is still gonna be like a couple hundred bucks. But what I'm really excited about now is it's been mostly sitting and now I really wanna get it on the road on a regular basis. So we don't have to do a whole wash and tune every time we wanna take it out. Yeah, that, that fuel pressure regulator is really the, the clutch piece. Um, yeah. You know, I just didn't want to drive the car with 20 PSI at a carburetor. That's how you flood it and start fires. And I don't want to have to rebuild a burned down car. Um, so I'm happy with it. I'm, I'm glad we got some work done. It was nice to have a win in the shop. Uh, the truck is such a long project that you just don't ever see the light at the end of the tunnel. And it was really nice to actually get in the garage with the missus and, and finish something. Start to finish, yeah, I've really realized that in this whole truck rebuild. I've been used to just doing bits and bops on my Studebaker versus whole car build start to finish frame off. Uh, and so this was a nice change of pace for us. But 
then we got to go out and have some fun. And that's really at the end of the day what owning a classic car is all about. Yeah, I got to take my baby and got a steak. It was fun. We interrupt this message to tell you about something that fine Mr. Klein has been up to. That's true, I am fine and I am Mr. Klein. Uh, and we went out and we saw some drag racing, got to watch some guys go down the strip, uh, racing against each other for uh, a prize and as well as egos. So it was a lot of fun, can't wait to share it. We're gonna link the video somewhere on this screen and down in the description. So look for drag battles, go watch it. We had a good time. Yeah. Every now and then, found, find yourself at a track. And that's exactly where we found ourselves today. We're at Texas Motoplex. Finally gonna figure out who gets to wear overalls. We're gonna settle this shit once for all. It's still gonna wear overalls even if I lose. It's okay, I'm gonna win. Today we've got Ethan's Daily Driver 2015 EcoBoost Ford Mustang. I like this because it's not going to be a matter of whose car is faster. It's not my my Ford versus your for Studebaker. What it is is it's one car but two drivers. So I'm going to go. I'm going to lay down the fastest time, and then we're going to let her go, you know, for pity. And then we're going to see how she runs. And this is going to settle uh, once and for all uh, who wears the pants. <laughs> I'm not going to talk too much crap before this race because this is his daily driver and it's manual. I don't see myself winning, honestly, though I do want to point out before we go, all this goes down, I hold the fastest time on the Bonneville Salt Flats. Mr. Klein's going down. I didn't do so hot. That was my first ever drag race. Well, thanks for hanging out with us while we talked about our 57 Ford. Uh, hopefully the temperatures will be dropping and we'll be able to get back to work on that pickup truck, which I'm real excited about because what's coming up on that truck? We're dropping the engine in. Dropping the engine in. Yeah, so join us, you guys. Be sure you subscribe to Driving Lines channel, ring the bell so you're notified when the next episode of Extra Good drops on you. And thanks for joining us today. Have a good time in your garage.